Yeah. Oh, the voice is still struggling. It has been a long few days. I'm sorry. That's right. Welcome in. Welcome back, folks, to a aftermath of a nightmare. Now that the um, initial emotions had toned down a little bit, let's go over this in, in, in more of a practical and less of an emotional way, addition of the always Irish show. On YouTube, you know where to find the program. A lot of new people have been finding it the last week just for all the wrong damn reasons. Listen, you guys, it is not lost on me, the irony that the most miserable I have been as a Notre Dame fan since I left the stadium the night of Bush Push, the most misery I've ever been in in 18 years, and it's the highest volume week, the most viewers, the most subscribers, everything. That is this business, and it is just depressing. That the worse it goes, the higher Johnny's numbers are. It is just sad. It is just sad, but I I like having new people. Welcome to the show. I'm glad people are subscribing. It is just not lost on me that the more miserable I am, the better the numbers. It is sad. Give the video a thumbs up, notifications on. That way you're alerted every time John's misery comes out on film for you to laugh at if you're an Ohio State person. Twitter, search bar, always Irish rat. Always Irish Inc. My voice is dead. Emails always Irish ND at gmail.com. Audio only anywhere you want it. You can get it. The Cullen lines. They are popping, baby. This show, the Cullen shows are growing. 312 15 You tell Johnny all the bad Notre Dame stuff you've heard and seen. Instagram, Facebook, always Irish Inc. USA Today, Fighting Irish Wire. Read all about it. We got you covered every damn day. We got you covered every day. Okay. Here's how we're going to do this one. Take breaths, John. Here's how we're going to do this. Now that we're a couple days removed from the initial emotional rush, the post-game call-in show was one minute after the game. It was all so raw. Everybody was just out of their minds, including me. That's a rough dynamic, and it was a brutal, important to have, but a brutal, miserable show. But I'm glad we had it. This cannot only be we do the call-ins and all this stuff when we're all happy and everything's good. That is weak. We needed to do it. It was hard to get through, but people needed to get their emotions out. I'm glad we did that. However, in the midst of the immediacy of those raw emotions for me and absorbing everything from the group, and then me recording the review video, not the live stream, we do the call in, that ends. And then I recorded the video review that comes out Sunday morning. That was off the emotions of the game. And then I did it after the call in show at like two in the morning. That's tough. The emotions were still so raw. I was so miserable and upset. My mind was spinning, processing what happened. The traumatization of the call-in show for everybody, like just how devastating everybody was. I'm very grateful to be doing this today. I I feel like I'm going to be in a better place to start logically looking at this Um, now that some of the immediacy of the emotions have worn down. So I am genuinely very excited to go that way with this one, okay? And then here's the other thing, and I'm just putting this out there because I got some messages on it and I saw some messages on it that I think some people didn't want me to see, but I saw them, okay? If you think that my show and my brand and my delivery are way too emotional and over the top reactionary and all that. That is fine. Just don't watch. This isn't the show for you. Don't watch. That's my area. That's my lane. If you want 
straight lace, Notre Dame wins or lose, pretty much monotone, tell you what happened and all that. If that is your entertainment avenue that works for you, I got good news for you. There's 15 other Notre Dame podcasts that do it that way. Pick one. That's the, I can't change what I am. This has morphed over the years into what it is. I'm the guy that talks to fans about how this all makes you feel. And if you don't want that or you don't like that, I don't blame you. My delivery is not for everybody. Go away. Go away. Don't email me or talk shit on Twitter about John's an emotional baby and it's too much. My delivery isn't for you. Go find another show. I don't care. I only know one way to do this, and it's the way that comes naturally to my personality and how I deal with this stuff. I don't care if it's not for you. Go away. Go away. You should have known what you were going to get from me after this type of game. The idea that you could sit there for a while and then be surprised by it. This isn't the show for you. I recognize my delivery style turns off a lot of Notre Dame fans. It's too intense and I'm too this and that. Fine. Go away and don't come back. Go away. My show's not for you. It isn't meant to be for everybody. Just go away. But if you think you're going to sit there and email me from an anonymous email calling me a crybaby and and you need to do your show different, never, ever going to happen. There are a dozen Notre Dame shows that will talk to you monotone and break down a stat and give you this and that play, what we did. If that's what you want, there's 15 to pick from. There's 15 to pick from now. Go for it. I'm never going to change the way I do my thing. I got to be natural to me and this is it. Okay? All right. Let's get into the game. And I'm excited to do this in a less emotional state. This will be good. I hope this is very uh, productive. Number one, the Notre Dame fans that did not sell out were great. Great. I don't care about the gimmicks anymore. We didn't win the, I I'm, I don't care about the green and bracelets. And I, I don't care. The f- actual fans were great. The ones who sold out, I want their season tickets revoked, especially the ones in the blue or gold seats down there in the first few rows with the cushions. Those are getting sold from big money Notre Dame people. Track them. You're losing your tickets. Okay. The ultimate blend of percentages, I don't think it was overwhelming. It wasn't Cincinnati, Georgia, Nebraska. It was not. So, you know, 80, 20, 80, you know, 22%. It wasn't a quarter. It, so, overall, the fans were great. I, it looked like people were standing and loud. Good job. The Notre Dame fans understood the moment and they did their part. Great job to everybody. The players played their asses off. They 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 left plays out there that you have to make, but they played their asses off and they played with fire and they were firing off all day and they came in ready to go. Um, they were ready to play and were fired up. Their energy and vibe matched the moment. It rose to the moment. The staff had a rough day. We'll get to it. Marcus had them in the right mind frame, ready to go into one of these moments. He did. Those guys were ready and the intensity stayed all game. So I want to credit those players there. Uh, They had about a dozen chances to make one more play and win the game and they didn't. And that is a problem. They didn't make the one more play they needed anywhere. You had 10 different chances and not one of those plays were made to win this game. Um, but they were ready to go. Okay. They were ready to go. And that's important. And it's something we were mad at Kelly at all the time about not being able to motivate. We go into big games. It's a business trip. No emotion. We get killed. All of that. They were ready for this. They were ready for it in the way I need a Notre Dame team to be ready for it emotionally and to be up for the moment. And they were. 
That being said, in the game, the staff let them down, but they were ready to play, and we need to acknowledge that. Number three, so here's something positive. If you are paying attention, you could see already how Freeman's changing the roster for the better. And I know no one is in the mood to hear about that right now. And I hate saying it because it sounds like excuses kind of and like kicking the can down the road, which I've, I've been railing against that Notre Dame never capitalizes in any actual moment. It's just maybe next year, maybe next year, maybe the next recruiting class, maybe we'll get a quarterback and it'll all change and it never comes as an objective fact, not connecting anything else to it, just as an objective fact, you could see the roster changing. There's young guys all over making plays. There's more depth. There's more speed. There's more athleticism. Um, You could see that. Even through this frustration, you can see that, and that is a good sign overall. Now, there are levels to this. Notre Dame proved they physically belong on the field with a team like Ohio State. And and a lot of the Kelly years, that was not the case. That's good. However, if you say to me, John, I feel like Notre Dame's getting close, but they're two to four key players away to win in these games and being really a playoff content. If you wanted to say that, I could get that. Two rush ends that get home on the quarterback and are animals. Maybe one or two of those, and you need a number one or two receiver that's a dude. If you even just gave Notre Dame those pieces, it would look a lot different. Okay, so there are levels to this, and Notre Dame's making their way up that that ladder. But a game like this, when you look at what really could have changed it for Notre Dame to win, you know, maybe a couple rush ends that are getting home and killing the quarterback. And, and maybe, a, you know, an established couple top wide receivers like they got. But objectively, Notre Dame's getting closer to the level we need them to be. And they belonged on the same field as Ohio State all night. And you couldn't say that before. I got to mention that even though I hate doing it. Because it feels like I'm downplaying how bad this game ended. I'm not. Number four, I have major issues with the coaching staff. The more I think about this game, the more the emotions are coming down and I'm practically looking at the football, I'm getting more mad, but in a different way, in like a logical, practical football way, not an emotional, raw heart thing. I got problems with the staff and that's an issue because they've been doing a pretty good job overall. Most of the game planning and stuff, I've I've been pretty happy with. I think Parker was okay most of the time coming into this game. I have major issues with the staff here. I think Parker outthought himself. I have no issue with you going for it on four downs. I didn't like either call. It's not an issue of going or not. I didn't like the calls. Throwing on the last drive made no sense. Estime was cutting them up. You just had a 13-play drive. You ran it on them. You were starting to wear them down and running on them. Estime goes right up the gut for a first down and a drive. You're trying to run out the clock, not give them the ball back, and then you take him out of the game. That's bad coaching. You're out thinking to yourself. And it's like, well, John, if that screen would have hit, the game's over, and we're all saying it was brilliant. The issue is, Two other times in the game, you ran these little tricky screens and they got batted down and one got almost intercepted. They were all over that all night. Both of them going to the right, too, of of the line of scrimmage. They had a couple of them and they got their hands out. Every one of them sniffed them out. I don't know why you thought this one would be any different. You outthought yourself. It's about the percentages. If you run it three times with estimate and don't gain a yard, they at least burn all their timeouts. The clock's winding down and you can pin them back there and give them way less time and no timeouts to work down the field with the rookie quarterback. A first year starter. Been in the program a while, but a first time starter. That was the move. 
because it gives you multiple chances to win the game. Getting a first down ends it. And then even if you don't, you're working towards winning it by having them burn their timeouts, run the clock down. You outthought yourself. Also, zero points at halftime is an F minus a complete failure. It is the exact opposite reason Sam Hartman was brought here. You can't do it. You can't do it. That was not the 85 Bears, and you were actually moving the ball a little and you couldn't score zero points. At halftime, at home, in the biggest game of the year is an F minus failure on everybody. Failure. F. At home, zero points at halftime. Joke. That is awful. But worse, even worse, after rewatching the game, I don't think the staff did what they brought Artman in here to do. I feel like this was a game where you were going to have to take a couple chances for some big chunk plays, flip the field, like have more explosive plays because the odds of you against that defense, Ohio State has. The odds of Notre Dame putting together a bunch of 12, 13 play methodical drives, three yards at a time, whatever. The odds of you doing that decrease the better the athletes you're playing against. And Ohio State has great five-star guys. I thought they got timid. I really thought you needed to let Artman try and get some bigger chunks. And I just, I the pass game plan was very, very timid for a guy like Hartman. And I think if ever you were going to take chances to flip the field and get big chunks, I'm not saying go wild with it, but a few times a half, You're not going to dink and dunk your way that down there on enough drives and make it work to score enough points against Iowa State. So you brought in Artman and we're going to open it all up and all this. I just felt like this was the game you needed to see a little bit more of that maybe. And you didn't. On the plus side, those young wide receivers are fighters for Notre Dame. You didn't let Artman cook. You didn't let Artman cook. Need a little more aggression there. I wanted Tyree to be a secret weapon. I didn't see him enough. What were you trying to do? Zero points at halftime is just a failure, man. You cannot bring Sam Hartman in here as the six-year guy and all the passing credentials and all, and you have zero points at half. And the only reason people aren't hammering this point more is because Ohio State didn't have a lot. So it doesn't seem that bad compared to what they had. Zero, zero. And it's bad. But those young wide receivers, Great House, Flores, even Merriweather got in the mix. Those guys aren't, aren't afraid to try and play in a big game. I was, I was happy to see them out there fighting. Those guys are going to develop and be really, really good, really fast. Estimate usage. I already message, me mentioned it. One or both of the four down calls, the last drives. I just, that's your horse, man. That's your horse. And he runs it up the gut and gets a big first down on the what should have been the final drive to run the clock out. And then you take him out. How? That's your dude. Don't overthink it. That's your dude, bro. Under the defense. They hung in there, you guys. 17 points. If you ask Notre Dame fans leading into this game, we're not telling you anything about how many Notre Dame scores. You're going to hold Ohio State to 17. Would you take that? 100% of the Notre Dame fan base should say yes or you're an idiot. I, I think all of us would have said, hell yeah, Notre Dame's winning if we held them to 17. Decent job overall in the run game, other than the one that popped, they burned you. But play to play, series to series, they held up in the run game. But two tackles for, for a loss, one sack, no turnovers, 10 guys on the field, 
blown coverages twice at the end of the game or once at least. And then they put us in a bad coverage that we, it was the wrong coverage to be in for the third and 19 bad coverage. And then a wrong call coverage and then 10 guys twice. And even if you had 11 out there, I don't, they weren't set up for a goal line play anyways. Even if we had 11, they were in a bad coverage, a bad setup, a bad scheme. Bad. Like, I can't believe I'm in a position saying you gave up 17 to Iowa State, but I need more. In a game like this, two tackles for a loss, one sack and no turnovers and some sloppy tackling early is not going to get it done. It's just not good enough to win this kind of game. You needed to catch one or two of those interceptions. You needed a strip sack. You needed more. You needed more. For as good as they hung in there, all the things on the back end are really bad looks. When an Al Golden defense makes a mistake, it is a stake through your heart. There is no small mistake for an Al Golden defense at Notre Dame. When there is one, it kills us the worst possible way in the worst possible moment. It just kill it. It's anytime there's a mistake, it's the biggest thing in the world that changes the game with this defense. Um, I just, I just can't. Like, I get it, man. Seventeen overall, you hung in there. That should be enough to win. I get it. But when I talked earlier about like maybe there's a next level to this, that's what it is. It's two guys flying off the edge, and you have five or six sacks, eight tackles for a loss. Two interceptions, a fumble. Like, you just needed more. You needed more. This defense hung in there. I needed more than that to get over the hump in this game. I just did. Okay. And the 10 guy thing is going to haunt Marcus till he wins a playoff game, probably. I don't know whether it's Al Washington's fault, Al Golden's fault. It's ultimately Marcus's fault no matter what. The head coach gets the blame or the credit no matter what. Good or bad, that's the way this goes. That's football. Um, I don't know whether it was a player, Al Golden, Al Washington, Marcus Freeman. I don't, I don't know who, but that's amateur hour, and it hurts me so much to say it's just completely embarrassing, unacceptable, humiliating for the Notre Dame players to pour their hearts out, play that intense all, all night. And then on the last critical moment, you didn't put them in a chance to even succeed. I can't handle that. I can't handle it. Notre Dame's ability to find unique ways to crush your soul over the decades is un, it's unmatched. It's unrivaled. The way Notre Dame finds ways to get into these positions to let you down is, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. The 10-guy thing to end this game is, it's, I can't imagine how happy everybody is that hates Notre Dame and hates me. They, it has got to be the, the Christmas every day now. To not like me, not like Notre Dame, and to see that happen, it's the staff let the players down. That that very clearly. Like, yes, the players needed to make a couple more plays to win the game. The staff blew the game. The staff let the players down. The entire final offensive and defensive sequences were horrible coaching, horrible coaching. Now, I don't know whether that is these guys, you know, Mark, Gerard Parker, first big game moment, trying to overdo it a little bit. I don't know. Defensively, I don't know what you could say. Al Golden's been around for 48,000 years, and you're out there twice with 10 guys with the timeout in between its amateur hour. Marcus, you're getting paid $6 million or whatever it is. This can't be it. 
And everybody knows I have an affinity for Marcus's personality in a way I never could relate to Kelly. I got to be consistent. If this was Kelly, I'd be killing him. I got to be mad at Marcus too. It's just completely unacceptable. And it's going to follow you. Marcus 10 man instead of free man, that, those shirts are coming. And I want royalties. But it's just completely unacceptable. And the latest in a string of my life of unbelievable ways, Notre Dame lets you down in the biggest moments with everybody watching with the chance to change everything. They keep coming up with ways and eventually it's got to change. You got to have the right player or the right situation or like you got to overcome this somehow. Hopefully before I'm dead. Couple more games like this. I don't know how much time I got. For whatever reason, Notre Dame's just not there yet. They're not ready to grab the bull by the horns and take advantage of one of these moments and claim the night and, and get the big game monkey memes off your back and all that. They're not ready to do it. They had 10 chances to do one thing different to win this game, and they didn't. I, I just, it's just rough, man. They're not there yet, but they're getting closer, and you can see it. It's just. They're the closest they've ever been to being able to play with these truly elite teams on the field, down in and down out. They are. That just doesn't make me feel any better about this. This was the one. The vibes were right. You had it in your hands. You had every chance to do it. You handed them the game. And the coaches really let us down. And it hurts me a lot, man. I... I love Marcus, but this one, you guys messed up and you you didn't do a good enough job and and you, le you let the guys down. Those players needed to make a nut one more play anywhere, but damn it, man, they were fired up all night. They were engaged and ready for the moment. And so there's a couple more levels to this with talent and development and depth that I could see Notre Dame's not there yet. They could have changed the game. And then the big play thing that Notre Dame used to have for 100 years, where when there was a big game deciding play to be made, Notre Dame was the, were the ones making it. That's what made our history as Notre Dame guys excelling in that moment. And we haven't had it in 28 years, 30 years. And something has to change that. And I have a feeling it might be one of those things where the first time it happens, it opens the floodgates. That the first time you win one of those moments in one of those games, it, it just kind of unlocks that and all that pressure goes away. And it's a new world. We're not there yet. And now you got a rough week. You got a rough week. Duke, undefeated, flying eye at night, game day. Louisville, night game the next week, then USC. There is no, there's plenty of time for John to be upset. There is no time for these players and coaches. You better get back in the lab because there's work to be done and the next three weeks are going to be tough. So, rough weekend, you guys. Rough weekend. Um, but uh, it makes me feel good to be able to do this I'm a little less high on the emotion and talk it out. I feel better about this now, being able to do this. Um and uh, thank you for everybody. We've had a big week. The more miserable I get, the higher the numbers. So thanks for the new people joining and chatting and calling. The community's growing. I just didn't want it to be out of misery. Have a good one.